All right. How is everybody doing? Welcome to week two of Where in the World is Spencer's Running. So going to give you an update kind of on where I've been with my running, um, what the kind of rehab protocol has been looking like. Again, if you follow me on Strava at uh, Spencer Agnew, you'll be able to follow along with this kind of day by day. Um, so last week, um, I did get some runs in. Um, took a couple days in between a um, couple of the runs, but the main focus for me after I, I had the injury, um, did some rehab, got back to running, re-injured it on the 1st of October. And then since then, the goal has been, okay, let's continue with the rehab stuff and let's continue to try to get consistency of running with minimal pain. So there, I know that I'm not going to go from having pain to not having pain, right? And that's a common misconception is that people think they're only able to run if they have no pain. We can keep running as long as the pain level is a minimum. And early on, we're not modifying our running form from a, a comp compensatory standpoint. So one thing I did do is I did modify my strike pattern slightly. I'm a very forefoot runner, which puts excess stress on the calf. So I tried to land with a little bit more of a midfoot strike just to take off some of that tension. So I wasn't compensating and, and running through pain. I was trying to change my biomechanics slightly to deviate where the forces go so that I can continue to run. Because we know that the specificity of load is what's most important when getting back from a injury and going through that rehab process. And the specificity of load for my situation is running. And a lot of the endurance athletes, a lot of the runners we deal with, that's what we want to do is we want to get them back running as soon as we can, as long as we know it's not a bone stress injury, right? And there's obviously, we put some guide rails up, we put some parameters in place to say you cannot deviate outside of these parameters. So for me, it was if my pain level got above a three, if I started to feel any of that kind of crampy catching type situation, um, I had to stop. And then if I started to go through my limping, which I, on the first one, I injured my calf, it was at a cross country meet and I had to run around. Um, I didn't have to, but I, I wanted to run around and cheer on the, the athletes. And I was limping for sure doing that. I had kind of a stiff leg. I didn't want to push off on my, my left side. So I knew I was compensating that day I, I shouldn't have run. So, um, what I did is I took the next day off things that I have been doing from a rehab standpoint is I've been going through the process of isometric contractions, concentric, then eccentric. So I'm initially after early on when I got my first injury and after this re-injury, I did some isometric holds. These are just prolonged holds, contracting the muscle, but holding it in place and going for duration. I like to try to get to 30 seconds first and then add some weight on um, and go then go to single leg. So I started with double leg isometric calf raise holds. So I had a, was next to a wall, no weights, just raised up on my toes with both feet, held for 30 seconds, rested, did that three to four times just to see how things feel. That felt okay. So then the next time I did it, I added a little bit of weight. So I held on to 20 pound weight, went through the same protocol. That felt good. Next day when I did it, I did it with a single leg fashion. Things felt good. So once I got to that point, then I started to do some concentric loading. So this is where I went into a single leg calf raise. And I started to go through my single leg calf raise progression, increasing weight. What I did for this one is I, a lot of times we'll go through like multiple sets of, of 12 or 15. Um, I did 30 reps straight. So it tells me that I can increase the weight. Um, I got pretty fatigued by the end. I was almost completely maxed out to get to 30 with a, a 20 to 30 pound weight as I progressed. Um, this kind of gets me back to the, gets us back to a, a thought, sorry, a little bit of a, a rant here in the middle of people always question like, well, I'm strong. Like how, how was I getting hurt? Like what, what's going on? Um, I have well-developed calves. Um, I have pretty strong calves. A lot of people will look at me, they'll, they'll make a comment about how, how large my calves are. Um, so people will say, well, aren't you like your calves are strong. Like you're, you should never have a calf injury. These things happen, right? So there, you can do, this is where we get the idea of is injury prevention a thing? I don't believe there's such a thing as injury prevention. I think we are injury, we're trying to reduce our risk of injury, but we can't ever prevent an injury. If you want to do that, you can stay on the couch. Um, but then that creates a lot of other chronic health issues. So I would say I'd rather risk the injury than um, die from chronic health issues. So with having well-developed calves and strong calves, I still had an injury. And it's, it happens and it's nothing where for me, like I didn't freak out, like, oh, dwell and like, oh my gosh, my training, like everything's all wrong. Like what's going on? I said, okay, this is where I'm at. How are we going to manage it? And the game plan for managing it is to try to get back to running 
as soon as we can to manage the injury and try to get some healthy load through that without spiking my symptoms. So for me, there's a, there's an acute, I guess for, for everybody, for everybody first, there's an acute, um, increase in inhibition. So there's good, you're going to see some, some weakness right after the injury. That doesn't mean your weakness caused your injury. That means that having pain, having that um, injury occur can cause some weakness. So I saw some of that. So I worked through getting some activation with the isometric holds, um, getting some analgesic effect, effect from the prolonged contraction. And then I went into a concentric, just regular calf raise up and down rhythmic control, trying to keep a nice rhythm to it. I'm not going as fast as I can. I'm controlling one second up, one second down, and just going through that rhythm um, to get some of that activation, get some of that strength back in the system. Okay. So I did that for a couple of days and then I've been back into, back into running. So primary goal for me was to gradually increase the amount of running I'm doing, the intensity of running I'm doing, but to get consistency of running. A lot of runners dwell, a lot of endurance athletes dwell on what they think makes you a runner, right? Or makes you an athlete. Like you have to get this far before you're really a runner. I hear it all the time where people say, I need six miles before I really feel like I'm a runner. And honestly, I'm gonna call bullshit. Um, like you need to be able to run consistently to get to the point where you can tolerate that amount of load and accept that amount of force on your tissues to be able to sustain a prolonged training cycle. It's an ego thing. So would you rather hurt your ego in the short term to maintain your training in the long term, or would you rather go through what most runners do is this up and down cycle of I'm, I'm, I'm back, I'm feeling good. I'm going to go do my six mile, four mile, whatever your, you feel like is classifies you as a runner, whatever that distance is, you go do that run for a couple of days and then boom, you're back at where you were, or you cycle through two weeks of running and two weeks off, two weeks of running, two weeks off. What's going to be better for you in the long term is going slow. And I'm not, you're going to see what, um, what my training was here. I'll show, I'll show you on a, a document in just a sec, but you're going to go slow and consistently over time, instead of giving these big spikes up and down, the goal is consistency to continue to introduce a little bit of load into the body so that the body starts to adapt to the specificity of load that we're trying to train it for. And then we gradually increase the duration. We gradually increase the intensity. We want consistency of running before we get to intensity and density of running. And then we want consistent density. That's what training is, right? Training is this consistency of running that has a lot of dense blocks in it. Whether you're somebody who does a couple hard days in a row, if you're doing two workouts a week in a long run, or however you and your coach structure your training, that's where the end goal is. But to get there, we have to go through the process of being consistent and then gradually adding in density and then consistent density, okay? So for this one, I tell people, I put the ego aside. Focus on getting healthy because that's going to give you the long-term physiological changes that you want. You're going to be happier in the long run, running with your friends, training for the races you want to do, living a healthier lifestyle than the physical and emotional roller coaster that a lot of people go on by doing what they think is their, makes them, classifies them as a runner. And a lot of that's just an ego thing. Um, and you have to dig deep and understand why you think that's the issue. I tell you, I ran a mile my first day back. I still think I'm a runner. Um, classifying myself as that category. So you got to dig deep, understand the why, understand what's limiting you from that standpoint so that you can follow the appropriate training protocol. Okay. So get off my rant a little bit. Um, let me share my screen. Okay. And here we're going to show the month of October. So I re-injured on the 1st of October. So what did I do? This day I was having increased pain levels um, from Saturday. I felt it walking around. I was walking around with a limp which means, guess what? I cannot run. I cannot walk without symptoms. I cannot run without symptoms, right? So we have to be able to walk before we can run. We have to be able to single leg hop before we can know we can tolerate running because running is a series of single leg hops. So I didn't do anything this day. Monday, I felt much better. I was feeling pretty good. I had gone through my rehab protocol on Monday, on Sunday, and already on, or sorry, on Saturday, Sunday, and already on Monday. Monday at practice in the afternoon, I went and I ran one mile. Um, for me, I think it was like 7.30 pace. I was trying to hold myself back. I did modify my my strike pattern here. So this is where I landed a little bit more flat-footed. Things felt good. So I was, I was happy with with how that felt. Um, I could have gone more, but I, I limited myself. I said, we're just doing one mile today. We're just trying to introduce some load to the body. I played it safe and I took the next day off. The day after that, I did a mile and a half on the grass. So this was like... 7.30 pace. This day, I kept it at like eight minute pace, like just nice and easy, modified the strike pattern again, just kind of felt good. Okay. The plan was to take this day off as well. Um, we had 
an incident where like uh, I had to hop in for some pacing duties. Um, and it was it was one of those where it was kind of just off the cuff, didn't know if this was necessarily gonna be the smartest thing to do. Um, I had felt pretty good walking around during the day. Again, I had done my rehab every single day. Um, so I did my the first mop 1.6 miles. Um, this is all on grass at around seven minute pace, pacing people around seven minute pace. Then I had like a 15 minute recovery and I paced another group around six minute pace at one point for 1.6 miles. All of this slightly modified my strike pattern. Um, but I actually felt really good. Um, didn't have any like catching, any irritation. I didn't even really have a limp afterwards for this. Um, there was no no discomfort. Um, I felt it was there. Like I, I wasn't 100%, right? I could, I could feel the calf was present on this one, but I didn't freak out. I could feel the calf present on this one, but I didn't freak out. I could feel the calf present here, but I didn't freak out. It wasn't pain. It was more just that sensation that something was off. And as an athlete, right, you know that, you know your body better than anybody else. So you can feel that, yeah, this doesn't feel like my typical run, um, but you were able to succeed. You were able to get the consistency and you're able to do it without spiking pain levels. So I felt good about this today. Um, I was really excited. So the next day I just went out and did like 22. Actually, this was here. Um, I took this day off because I knew I had run hard. I had run hard here. So I took a day off. And I went 22 minutes easy on Saturday. So this total volume was less than this total volume, but it was consistency, right? It was just in a longer duration at once. This one was was like 10 minute segments, like broken up, but they were faster. So this was slow again, like, I don't know, probably 750 pace or something like that. Um, I did my rehab every day, did my isometric holds. I did my concentric um, calf raises. I didn't overdo it. I went through probably the isometrics like twice a day, went through my concentric loading every day. I got like 30 reps in of each with a, a heavy, heavy uh, kettlebell and called it a day. Biggest thing was I kept getting my runs in. I didn't bump up too much too quickly, right? This is easy, a mile, mile and a half, three miles. This was 2.75 or something. So my mileage didn't look good. You no, know, my Strava wasn't sexy this week, um, but I was running again which is exactly what I wanted. So then the progression for next week is hopefully to be able to run a little bit more. Um, I was actually pretty impressed that I was able to do this day. So I might try to do a little bit more of like a steady state run, just not really looking for um, effort, but just trying to like, oh, I'm going to increase the intensity a little bit. Um, try to run like five days again this week, take a couple of days off just to make sure that things are still in a good spot. Ran four days here, not high volume. I'll do five days here. Still won't be crazy high volume. I'll probably run like start around 30 minutes or so. Um, check back next week. I'll have, I'll, I'll do this exact same thing with the calendar and update next week. Um, but that's kind of the plan. Also keeping my strength stuff in there. Um, one thing I did do on this day is I also added in some compound movements. So I did a Bulgarian split squat and I did some back squats as well. Um, three sets of eight for both, nothing crazy heavy, just trying to go through movements and get some single leg load, but then some, some bilateral load, um, get a little bit heavier on the, the back squats. Just, I felt, felt good just getting some strength training in. Um, so that's what I did here to supplement. Um, plan is to do it here and here next week to get some strength stuff in as well. And then continue with my calf loading, calf isometrics and add in eccentrics this week. Okay. So went through a lot there. Um, a lot of like my thought process for, for my training, for my rehab protocol, some things to look out for, kind of putting your ego aside um, and making sure that we're focused on consistency of training because we're in this for the long run, right? My goal is to be able to build back into full training. I want to get up to like 60 miles a week and um, start to do workouts every week and get in some long runs and train for some races. But I've got to put my ego aside. No, that's not going to happen. I had wanted to do a race on November 12th. I might do it. Um, I just know that the performance is going to be there. Um, and that's okay. Um, but we'll kind of continue to progress from there. So I will put in the description of this video, some, a link to some of the exercises that I'm doing, um, that calf raise, the holds, bugger in split squats and back squats. Um, and then if you people want to check those out, they can take a look. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment on the video, um, shoot me an email. Um, we'll have contact information in the description as well. Otherwise have fun, everybody stay running, stay safe. We'll talk to you soon.